Hello everyone, my name is Sari Sabban and this is a video tutorial on how to use Rosetta Ab Initio. The Rosetta software suite is a collection of many different types of, of programs, uh, mainly uh, to design proteins computationally. And Ab Initio is one of the central uh, programs that we use to fold our designed proteins and try to attempt to understand whether our design proteins are logical or illogi illogical. Um, Ab Initio folds the protein computationally in s so we don't have to synthesize the protein, express it, purify it, uh, crystallize it and solve its structure. Uh, instead of spending a lot of money and uh, several weeks doing that, you can fold the protein computationally and get an idea whether or not the protein folds correctly or not on your computer within depending on the size of the protein, but within six to nine hours. Ab initio folds the protein from its primary structure. It comes from the concept that all the information needed to take the protein and fold it to its native structure is encoded within the amino acid sequence. There are three concepts you have to understand before we start uh, to use ab initio. These three concepts, if you understand them well, you will understand why ab initio functions the way it is, how we're going to use ab initio, and what type of results uh, come out of ab initio. The first thing you have to understand is the Monte Carlo method. Uh, if you're not very familiar with the Monte Carlo method, in its crude form, in its very, very simple understanding, it's, it's random moves. Think of it this way. Um, if you have a circle inside a, um, on a piece of paper, but you don't know where the circle is or what its size, how big it is, you can use the Monte Carlo method to find out where the circle is and how big it is and make all, your, all other calculations simply by dropping uh, random dots on it. Right? If, the, um, if the dots are inside the circle, they're red. If they're outside the circle, they're black. If you drop three or four dots, you're not going to get any information or you won't get enough information to understand the size or the location of the circle. But if you drop thousands and thousands of dots, then you will get meaningful information. That's how the Monte Carlo method kind of works. It's random moves, but we need to generate a lot of random moves in order to get meaningful information. So if you use ab initio and you generate three structures, they will probably all be different. That's because it uses the Monte Carlo method to fold the proteins. That's not a problem. What we have to do is generate thousands and thousands of structures in order to get meaningful information. And at the end of the tutorial, we will reach, we, I will show you some of these uh, results. We will actually calculate them together and I will show you what, um, what a, uh, an ab initio result looks like. So the first thing you have to understand is that ab initio uses the Monte Carlo method in order to fold proteins. How it does that? Uh, it takes an amino acid sequence and it randomly chooses an amino acid from the sequence and then moves its phi and psi angles. That way, it kind of folds a little bit of the protein. And then it measures whether this movement is good or bad. If it's good, it, it keeps that movement and moves a different type of amino acid. If it's bad, it reverts back to the previous structure and moves a different amino acid. So the question is, how does Ab Initio know what's a good move and what's a bad move? This is the second concept, the energy function. Rosetta is built around the Rosetta energy function. Um, the latest one that has been published is REF 2015, the Rosetta energy function 2015. The one before it was Talaris 2014, and the one before it was Talaris 2013. But basically, the energy function is a calculation of the amount of energy inside a protein structure. If you have a primary structure, just a straight uh, sequence of amino acids, this structure has very, very high energy, and therefore it doesn't want to be in that configuration. It wants to fall to lose that energy and end up with the most stable the, most, the structure with the least amount of energy. We call that the global minima. So Ab Initio moves a structure and then calculates, does it have less energy or more energy? If it does a movement and it has more energy than the previous move, it reverts back to it. If it makes a move and it finds that it has less energy than the previous move, 
it keeps it and makes a new move. And that's how it combines the Monte Carlo method with the uh, energy function in order to, to try and fold proteins. The last concept um, before we start using ab initio is the root mean square deviation. A root mean square deviation or, or RMSD is basically uh, comparing two three-dimensional structures together. If you have a structure and you're comparing a similar structure onto it, if they fit exactly, if all the atoms uh, fit exactly to, uh, 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 on each other, you get an RMSD of zero. The more RMSD you get, the higher the deviation is from one protein compared to another protein. So if you have, so, so for example, if we have an arginine uh, uh, that is designed in a specific configuration and then we fold a protein and we measure the location of the folded arginine uh, and if we realize, we, we can see that they don't exactly match all the atoms where they're, they're supposed to be and therefore the folded arginine is deviated by around an angstrom or 1.6 angstroms. So the root mean square deviation or RMSD is how different one protein is compared to another protein. So these three concepts are essential to understand how and why we use ab initio the way I'm going to show you how we're going to use it uh, and uh, what type of results uh, come out and how do we understand these results. First of all, that uh, ab initio uses the Monte Carlo method, which means we cannot just um, uh, fold one structure, we have to fold thousands and thousands of structure, which is why using ab initio on the local computer doesn't work. You can use your uh, ab initio on the local computer uh, so you can understand how it works and what are the commands and so on, but to use ab initio effectively you need a high performance computer, a supercomputer. The other concept is that folded structures have less energy than the primary structure and we want structures with the lowest energy score. And the final concept is the root mean square deviation. We want folded structures that look as much similar to our design protein as possible. So basically we want a lot of structures and most of these structures we want them with the least amount of energy score and the least uh, value of RMSD. So let's see how we can use ab initio on our local computer. We can use uh, ab initio on our local computer in order to understand the commands and the, uh, the, the structure of how to make ab initio work. But to use it effectively, we need to use it on a high performance computer, which I'm also going to show you. Okay, let's start by showing you how to get uh, Rosetta. So if you go to the rosettacommons.org website, uh, you will find um, software. And under software, you will find the license and download. And then you, you can download Rosetta from here, but uh, if you click this link, you will get prompted for a username and password. That's because you need a license. And you get a license here, and that's, this is the page you will find. And uh, if you look down here for a li an academic license and you start uh, the process, you'll, probably, you'll just be prompted to fill out a form uh, and an email address, and they will send you the link, the same link here, the uh, academic download link. Um, and in the email, it will contain the username and password for you to access the download page. Once you download Rosetta, which will, it's, it's around two gig gigabytes, uh, you have to compile it. Now, I am using a uh, Ubuntu 17.04 uh, uh, Linux operating system, which I have found is much easier to uh, install and compile Rosetta on. You will need to install these three programs uh, using this command. Um, then you will have to uncompress the downloaded Rosetta file. Um, here it says Rosetta 3.7, I think the latest one would be 3.8. Anyway, whatever you download, um, you will have to uncompress it. And once you uncompress it, you will have to change the directory CD into the main source uh, directory. Now, when this is written, this means whatever path to Rosetta, because you can compile Rosetta anywhere in a computer. I personally compile it in my home directory. So you have to go into the uncompressed uh, Rosetta directory, then to the main directory, then to the source directory, and there you run this command. And then you go to sleep. 
because it takes hours for Rosetta to compile. But once it's compiled, ab initio will reside in this location. So in my computer, I have Rosetta compiled in my home directory and within the Rosetta directory, I will go to the main source bin and then I will find the executable for ab initio. And if I run this command right now, let's try it, I will get an error. But this error is from within the ab initio binary, from within the ab initio executable. It's not um, an error from my computer, which means that ab initio does work. Basically, it says it cannot find a sequence file and it cannot find a native file. That's because we haven't provided them yet. But at least you know that ab initio is working. Now, we are going to attempt to fold this structure. The one ELW structure. Here it is, have downloaded it. Now this is the crystal structure of the protein. And we will try to fold it using ab initio. In order to perform an ab initio calculation, we will need five files. And I will explain to you uh, the reason for each file. We will first need the PDB structure file, and obviously we will also need the FASTA file, the, the sequence of the protein. Then we will need a 3MER fragment file, a 9MER fragment file, and a CYPRED secondary structure prediction file. These three files are very easy to get, and I'll explain to you how to get them and what is their purpose. So let's start. This is the structure file that we have. Now remember, why are we going to use a structure file? If you want to predict the fold of a protein, why do you need the structure, the already folded protein? Remember, um, we, are us we usually use ab initio to fold designed proteins, not yet unsolved protein structures. There is a way to do that, but it's extremely difficult and we're not going to cover it today. So let's assume that this structure, this structure is a design protein. You have, for whatever reason in your research, you have taken uh, either the whole protein or large sections of this protein, and you've redesigned them. You've put parts in, you've changed some parts of it, and you don't know, because you've changed the protein aggressively, you don't know if it will fold into this native structure or not. So you would use ab initio to try to predict, is my design logical? or it's completely crazy. So that's why we have a starting PDB structure file. Now we need to get a FASTA file. And there are many ways to get a FASTA file from a structure file. It's, it's not very complicated. Uh, there are scripts within Rosetta that is provided, and there are other ways. And if, if you really have time, you can even code your own Python uh, script to generate a FASTA file from a structure file. But I found the simplest method just to open PyMole and type save, and then the location, and then the, uh, whatever file name, dot FASTA, and that's it. Then you get a FASTA file. Now we need to generate the uh, fragment files and the secondary structure prediction file. Uh, and it's very, very, very simple. Basically, you will go to the robetta.org uh, website and that's a server at the University of Washington um, Within this website, you will go to fragment library submit All right, and here you will see that we can simply just take the FASTA sequence you can upload the file But I, I think copy paste is, is enough and You have to register a name here. We'll say just demo uh, You have to add a target name and you have to register a name in order to use the server and just click submit It's that easy. It's, it's, it's very easy. Just click submit and that's it. You just have to wait until the job completes, which will give you the fragment files and the st secondary structure prediction files that you need. I have already submitted a, uh, the, the same sequence earlier, just so I can save time. But basically, if you go to the page of your, uh, of your job and click Downloads, here you find the files that you need. And you will need to download the Threamer file the 3MER file, let's download this, save as into the desktop, yeah. 
and the nine mer file save as as well and then the secondary structure prediction file this the ss2 not this one this one right i save this one as well and if you look inside them they're just uh, text files all right so we have the five files that we need we've got the structure file and ab initially will not use the structure file to fold the protein but it will compare the folded structures to this structure in order in order to get the rmsd values and then we've got the faster file which is the pri which is the the main file that we will use to fold the protein and then we've got the fragment files and the second destruction prediction file now remember i told you that ab initio uses the monte carlo method in order to fold proteins it takes a primary structure and chooses randomly a uh, an amino acid and moves its phi and psi angles the problem here is that if we just give ab initio just the primary sequence it will take a very long time to fold the protein that's because the search space is very large the number of amino acids the angles each amino acid can uh, can be at it will take a long time for ab initio to fold a protein let alone thousands and thousands of proteins so we can um, get meaningful information using the monte carlo method so we use the fragment files in a way to kind of cheat or kind of direct ab initio towards the, uh, the the most logical protein what a fragment file does if you look at it it's basically uh, takes uh, a sequence in the in the three mer file it takes uh, three amino acids and it takes this sequence and it searches a large database the val database and it and it looks what are the torsion angles of this sequence in different proteins all right so if we look at the faster sequence for example and we've got this sequence here and the database finds that most proteins have this sequence as a helix then there's no reason for ab initio to search for any other type of structure if this sequence is a helix we tell ab initio to always search for the best helical structure of this sequence that way we narrow the search field for ab initio and we allow ab initio to find the lowest energy structure quickly and this is also what happens with the nine mer structure uh, basically it take instead of taking uh, a sequence of three amino acids it takes a sequence of nine amino acids and again it will it will and so ab initio would take these sequences with their torsion angles and input them into the uh, structure and uh, it will end up with a starting structure so for example it will end up with a helix here uh, beta sheets uh, here uh, and instead of starting with just a straight amino acid it will start with uh, and instead of starting with a straight um, uh, uh, protein structure it will start with a protein structure that has some secondary structures into it and using this starting structure it, it attempts to fold this structure and that way we narrow the uh, s the search space for ab initio to within a reasonable time this also is assisted by the secondary structure prediction file and, and, and it's, it's pretty accurate it will tell you that this is a helix here uh, there's another helix here there's a loop here and to understand yeah, uh, this amino acid sequence here either he this amino acid sequence here is a helix there's no reason to search for anything else or any other type of torsion angles that will not result in a helix and that way we narrow the search space for ab initio and be able to fold a protein within a reasonable amount of time so these are the five files that we require to perform an ab initio calculation there is a sixth file that we need but this but this sixth file uh, we write uh, we don't calculate or we don't generate through a calculation we have to write it ourselves and it's basically the flags file and the flags file tells ab initio what to do what are the input files what are the input parameters and what is the output file name for example um, we have to start by uh, these flags do not have to be in this specific order um, we start by telling ab initio where is the rosetta database remember you can 
compile and um, place Rosetta anywhere in your computer. And different people would prefer to compile Rosetta into their desktop or a specific directory or like me on my home directory. Um, you can use Rosetta on a Macintosh or a Linux. So these directories change. So you have to tell App Initio where is the directory that leads to the Rosetta database. Then you will tell App Initio to input the, your design structure, your native structure, where everything else would be compared to, and then your FASTA sequence, and then your 3 uh, fragment file, your 9 mer fragment file, and your, secondary and your secondary structure prediction file. Then you will tell App Initio to generate just one folded structure, also known as a decoy. Now remember, one folded structure is not enough for a, a real ab initio result. Now remember, generating one structure from ab initio is not enough. In order to get meaningful information from ab initio, we need to generate around 25,000 structures, sometimes a million structures for, for publication. And of course, we cannot do this in our local computer, so we're only going to generate just one decoy. Uh, the, the rest is just uh, some parameters for App Initio to use. Uh, we, I'm not really going to go into details about them because this configuration is, is good and you should don't change it, just use it as it is. Finally, the output file. Now, if you look at the uh, demos in Rosetta, you will find an extra flag here that will tell you to out, that will tell App Initio to output the decoy as a PDB structure file. If you remove it, as I did here, and you just keep this flag, uh, the decoy will be outputted as a silent file. And I strongly recommend that you get into the habit of always up outputting silent files. That is because a silent file contains all the structure files compressed into one location. Now, in our example, we're only going to generate one structure file, one folded structure, which is fine to handle. You can even output 10 structures if you want. But as I said, to get any meaningful result out of Ab Initio, we need to generate 25,000 structures. And dealing with 25,000 structures is tedious. Not for you, but also for the computer. If you have 25,000 separate files, it is difficult to search through them, it is difficult to move them, difficult to compress them, difficult to even delete them. Therefore, it is much simpler to compress all these structure files into one silent file. And this silent file will contain everything that you need. It will contain the score, it will contain, it will contain the RMSD, it will, it will contain the actual structure file and we can extract it from it. But having all these structure files compressed into one file makes it easier to deal with. It will be easier to search through this one single file, even if it's very large, like around 10 gigabytes. It will be easier for you to move it, uh, to compress it, and if you, for some reason, you don't want it, you can delete it very easily. So get into the habit of ge always generating silent files and then getting the information you want from the silent file or extracting the structure that you want from the silent file. So these are all the files that we need and now we can run up initial and it's very simple we change directory into our desktop where all our files are located and then the command is very very simple just locate the executable for uh, ab initio and it's always within the rosetta directory uh, in the path main source bin for binary and then ab initio default and uh, again it says linux because i'm using uh, i've compiled it on a linux computer and then you say at the flags file flags file and that's it now because we're generating one structure it will take around maybe 10 minutes maybe 15 minutes well, it finished much quicker than I thought. It finished in only five minutes. And this is what we get. We get a silent file and a scores file. Now, I personally delete the scores file because the, the same amount of information is already within the, uh, the silent file, and I don't like duplications. Uh, if you open it, you will see that this is the scores. And 
this is the silent file. And again, these are the same scores here. Uh, so I basically just delete the score file. Uh, this is the silent file. This is what the silent file looks like. And this is just for one structure. You've got the sequence, you've got the total score. This is the total score, and then the breakdown of this total score with these different values from the energy function that I explained earlier. And this is the actual um, compressed PDB structure file. And when, and when we come to extract this structure, this is the information that will be used. So we can see that we've got the score here, and we've got the RMSD here, which is actually, actually surprisingly quite a good RMSD for a first run. And we've got the uh, name of the file. So to extract this file, let's take this name here and use the uh, another binary within Rosetta. And we would say T. out as pdb structures and we have to tell we have to tell rosetta we want to extract this particular file if we leave this out if we leave this out it will extract every single file within within the silent file which is fine if we have just one structure file within the silent file but if you have 25000 structures it will extract all 25000 of them and this might crash your computer so be careful Therefore, there it is. And we've extracted the structure file from the silent file, and you can see this is what it looks like. This is actually quite similar to our initial native structure, and it doesn't usually happen this way, but I guess you guys are lucky. All right, so let's align them. Align all to this molecule, center, Visualize and cartoon, as you can see, very nice. And you can see that after we've aligned them, we've got an RMSD score of, well, the RMSD formula for Rosetta is slightly different than the one in Pymol. And Rosetta says it's 1.023, and Pymol says it's 0 0.969. It's close enough. but. This just to show you what the RMSD value looks like and what is the meaning of uh, an RMSD, a root mean square deviation. All right. So this is how we run ab initio, at least in our local computer. The nice thing about uh, Rosetta is you can learn how to use Rosetta on your local computer. And especially if you have Linux, it will be much easier for you to translate your work into uh, a supercomputer. Because as far as I know, most academic uh, supercomputers have Linux as their operating system. So if you can understand how to run ab initio on your local computer, it will be easy for you to translate that same work onto a supercomputer. Uh, the only difference is that unlike a local computer, a supercomputer requires you to write a job submission file uh, to submit your calculation into the actual CPUs of the uh, computer. And that's probably the only difference between running ab initio on a local computer and a supercomputer. So, okay. Now let's see how we can perform an ab initio calculation on a high performance computer. This is the high performance computer that I'm registered at. You can see here on the left the SSH, the secure shell, and on the right you can see the SFTP, the secure file transfer protocol. So I can upload and download my files. And again, all we need is the same five files that we generated and the flags file. And let's upload these to the supercomputer. Uh, let's make a directory called demo cd into the directory there's nothing inside and let's um let's cd where are we now yes we are here um let's put everything from the desktop so all these files and let's upload them into the 
uh, supercomputer. All right, they are uploaded. Let's see them. Yes. And now I'm going to delete these files because I like to keep my computer clean. Now, let's check the flags file. Now, running app initio on a supercomputer is not really it's not going to be any t any faster than running it on a local computer what i'm trying to say is if it takes you around five minutes to run uh, to fold a structure on your local computer it will probably take the same amount of time on your supercomputer but the supercomputer gives us an advantage instead of running 25,000 structures in sequence, so structure one, then structure two, then structure three. Instead of doing that, on a supercomputer, because it has many CPUs, we can run 20 or 25 structures in sequence, but repeat that protocol a thousand times. It's called an array. So effectively, if it takes us three hours to generate 25 folds, 25 decoys, now remember, ab initio folds structures using the Monte Carlo method, which means if we repeat the protocol, every time we'll get a different structure. And that makes it ideal to run ab initio as an array. So basically, we would run we would write a setup to generate 25 structures only, but repeat that protocol a thousand times on a thousand CPUs. Again, it's a supercomputer, so it does have a thousand CPUs. Well, a thousand cores. Each CPU will have several cores inside it, and we only need one core of one CPU. And that makes um, ab initio ideal for running as an array. So if we look at our flags file, the first thing we're going to change is we don't want just one structure. We want, we want 25 structures. So let's change this into 25. The other thing we have to pay attention to is the silent output file, all right? Now, if we are going to repeat our protocol a thousand times, each output will have the same name of the silent file, which means it will be replaced. To get around this, the best way to do is to write the variable of the array, the job ID variable. And in my case, it's going to be PBS underscore array underscore index. And what this means is for array number one, we will get a fold underscore silent underscore one dot out. And then for array number two, we will get fold underscore silent underscore two Dot out. And that way we can rename our silent files according to each array it's outputted from. Otherwise, if they all have the same name, we will end up with only with just one silent file with only the last array's output, which is 25 structures. And that's a waste of time. And therefore, that's, the w th that's one of the differences between running ab initio on your local computer and on the supercomputer. You need to add this this variable to make sure that each output is named differently so they do not get replaced then we will have to write a job scheduler now let me highlight something my supercomputer uses a pbs as its job scheduler now remember, a supercomputer is not used by one person. It's used by an entire university. And many people can connect to the supercomputer and each one can uh, request a computation time or, or, or a certain number of CPUs to, uh, or to compute uh, uh, algorithms. You, you can't do this if you, everyone is, is waiting in one long straight queue. You need a job scheduler. So for example, I want to compute something that takes three hours, but another person wants to compute something that takes one month. The job scheduler distributes each job to each CPU. And the supercomputer I'm registered at has PBS as, as its job scheduler. From my understanding, most academic supercomputers will have Slurm instead of PBS. And they're more or less the same. PBS being a proprietary software and Slurm being an open source software. 
Uh, but the nice thing is I've used both and both of them kind of function the same. They have the same general concept. Their commands might be slightly different, but the concept is the same. So the job submission file that I'm going to write at the moment is going to be for PBS. If you are registered at a supercomputer, it's going to be, uh, it might be uh, different. So you will not be able to copy exactly what I say. You have to understand how your respective supercomputer works uh, and how to submit jobs for it. But the concept itself is the same. You see what I mean at the moment. So let's write a uh, file, a, jo a, a job submission file, and let's say it ab initio.pbs. All right. Uh, what we start with is a shebang. Uh, cloud exclamation mark bin bash, and then we will write PBS dash capital N, and this is ab initio, and this is the name of our computation. So when we submit our computation and we try to find it in a queue, you can see that it will have my username and this as the name of the ca of the calculation and then we will say pbs dash q and we'll say thank uh, again this is something uh, this specific setup is just for the supercomputer that i'm using your compute your supercomputer would probably have something different thin is just basically the type or the flavor of uh, computation that i would like um, it will have less memory and a lot of CPUs, which is what I, which is exactly what I need. I don't need a lot of memory. The output file is probably going to be less than a gigabyte, either, even for 25,000 structures, but I need a thousand cores. Then we will say PBS, oh, sorry, count PBS, and the length of time, the length of the uh, computation that I will need is going to be around nine hours. And Again, this is one thing uh, very nice about Abinishu is that you can you can simulate the fold of your protein in less than a day instead of having to synthesize the DNA, clone it, uh, express it, purify it, crystallize it, and solve its structure through X-ray or NMR, uh, which takes a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of manpower. You can kind of predict the structure, uh, the uh, the final structure of your protein in less than a day. Now, after we generate the results, we're going to, ta to, we're going to talk about uh, some of the limitations of uh, ab initio, but I'm going to request only nine hours of computation time because I know it's going to finish in three or if worst case scenario is going to be six hours uh, and that will bump me up the queue. So I won't have to wait for a very long time. Then we will say PBS, again, dash L, uh, select one CPU and from that one CPU no sorry one core from CPUs and CPUs good one so I'm, I'm going to request one core from uh, one CPU uh, my supercomputer is uh, designed in such a way that it has 420 CPUs and each CPU has 24 cores and again if I'm going to use just one core for this for, for this calculation that will bump me up the queue so I, instead of waiting for uh, some CPUs or some cores to be available there are always going to be a core here or there that's available for my computation uh, then I'm going to say PBS dash J OE so I uh, OE and that will combine my output file and my uh, error file into one file. I don't want a lot of junk files into my working directory, uh, and I want to combine everything as, a, as much as I can. And that basically, the output file is, if you saw when we run ab init in our local computer, there are printout that comes out from the terminal. And this printout, in ab init is not going to be useful for us, um, uh, but sometimes uh, this printout has some useful information and some important values that uh, a user might need. And therefore, when you submit when you submit a calculation job uh, to the supercomputer, you don't see this output. It's invisible to you. And therefore, the supercomputer would, would log this output into an output file so you can scroll through it and read it. There is a function where you can have a separate error file. So in, uh, 
instead of reading through the entire output and looking for an error, it will be in a separate file. Then here is the most important part. PBS, PBS, capital J, and this is going to be one to 1000. And this is going to be the array. I'm going to ask my supercomputer to repeat this, whatever I'm going to submit now, to submit it a thousand times. So instead of actually have to, having to write a thousand files and have to manually submit a thousand files, I'm going to automate this. And this is called an array. Then we're going to cd into our local directory, pbs, capital O, work, dir. And again, because you are in a local node, when you submit a computation to the supercomputer, its default is to put everything into your home folder. And I don't want that. I want everything to be uh, placed and saved into my local folder. So I tell the supercomputer to change directly back to my local folder and um, dump everything there. And then we'll have the command for ab initio. And then we'll say add flags. And that's it. So as you can see, we've got the header uh, that explains what the uh, what type of computation we want to submit to the supercomputer. We tell the supercomputer to uh, run the computation on our working directory. And what is the command that the supercomputer should perform or, or should execute, which is an ab initio and the flags file. And that's it. Um, NC it is so it has to be an s yeah i this has to be p b s p b s there we go yeah, now we can submit it uh, so i've i forgot to change the location of the database so let's change that No, everything should be fine. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. I had some errors and I just fixed them. And the problem was that I, if I went to the flags file, I forgot to change the path, the new path at the supercomputer to the Rosetta database, and that was causing me some errors. And um, that was it. Now when we submit, Q sub ab initio PBS, that should work now. And this is the job ID. This indicates that it's an array. And when we try to open it, QSTAT, my username, you will see there it is. Yeah. Okay, so uh, array number one will give us um, 25 structures. Array number two will give us another different 25 structures. Again, remember, because ab initio performs the calculation using the Monte Carlo method. And we've got uh, all the way to. 1,000, uh, so uh, this protocol repeated 1,000 times. Each one of these entries will give us 25 structures for a total of 25,000 structures. And now we leave this for another three to six hours. I'm going to come back after uh, six hours to check on it and it should have completed. So the calculation has finished, but unfortunately the VPN to my supercomputer has been down for the past several days. So I went to the university and I downloaded all the files so I can continue with the demonstration, but on my local computer. Now, there will be no difference between what you do here in your local computer or what you do on your supercomputer. It will be exactly the same. So these are the files. You can see that there is 1,000 silent files. Because remember, we requested 1,000 arrays, or uh, we requested that our calculation is repeated 1,000 times. So inside each of these silent files is 25 structures. Now, again, it's difficult to deal with 1,000 files. It would be much easier if we can combine them all into one silent file. And there's a command for this. The command is very simple, and it is provided by Rosetta. It's one of the binaries that come with Rosetta. So we navigate to our Rosetta directory. And this will be the command. It's the combined silent binary. And you will input the silent files. All of them are named fold underscore silent underscore and then a wildcard for all the numbers dot out 
and then the output file will be just fold that out and when we do this we will combine all these silent files into one single file now remember you have 1000 files and a total of 25,000 structures so it will take a while for this to complete it will probably take around one hour maybe an hour 20 minutes depending All right, now that we have combined all our silent files, you can see here it has finished reading 25,000 structures, exactly as we predict that we have. And that also indicates that there aren't any errors that has occurred during the computation. Sometimes uh, one of the arrays would refuse to complete and you would have to uh, cancel it and you end up with uh, uh, less structures. Um, but we can see from here that we have successfully generated 25,000 structures or as we also say in uh, Rosetta uh, 25,000 decoids uh, we still have the silent files so we can delete them now so it, it's, it's fine that we delete them because we have combined all the information into a into a single silent file and there's no reason to keep all these files because it's just repetitive work And these are all the files that we have. You can see we've got the fold.out file. It contains all our structures, all 25,000 of them. It's a very big file, it's around 350 uh, megabytes. And that makes it very easy to search through. It's very easy to handle this file it's if you want to delete it or copy it or back it up. And if you want to search through it, as we are going to do right now. Now remember, what we're looking for is the RMSD and the score of each structure. So we can plot a score versus RMSD plot. The way to do it is to grep score. Actually, let me show you what I'm doing. Uh, if we open the fold, if we open the silent file, we will see that these are the scores. All right, this is the total score, which corresponds to, okay, I can't, uh, it, which corresponds to this value, and then a breakdown of this total score, uh, which are these values here. And then you can see the RMSD here. Uh, what we will do is we will take this value, or, well, uh, the value that corresponds to the, to the score and the value that corresponds to the root mean square deviation. So we will ask grep to take, to um, extract these lines, and then we will, say, we will tell awk to take only column 2 and if I remember correctly it's column 28 and then we will save this into a separate file uh, and we call this the score file so let's grep score from the fold uh, from the silent file and then let's see what, what this looks like all right and then we will say awk print um the second column and then let's make let's make a tab space and the uh, 28th column let's see what this looks like there we go uh, exactly see we've got the score and the root mean square division you can you can see that there are very high scores and very very low scores and uh, this will kind of make it difficult to view our plot, but we will fix this when, when it's time to, to plot our scores. Um, and then let's sort them. Let's see how they look. So let's sort uh, by the first column, which is now the score. And you've got now a sorted file. And we need to remove this. Uh, this line otherwise um, when we come to plot when we come to uh, plot uh, these points um, the program will be confused with this line it will uh, it will give us an error anyway uh, let's let's save this into a file called scores um, let's say, let's say let's, let's say it fall dot data it's always it's always good to keep the names uh, consistent and there it is and this is very easy to plot right now just to show you something as a result of the computation ab initio prints us a scores file 
the information in the score file is already found in the silent file. And I, I personally don't like repetitive work, especially if it's, it has some memory to it. So I'll just delete it. Yeah, there we go. So let's fix this file. Uh, let's remove the string where it says score on RMSD, and then let's plot it. Let's uh, plot it. Let's see how it looks like. The program I will use is called GNU plot, and we'll s just say uh, plot uh, fold dot data. Okay, I, I know what, what happened here. I um, I have to switch the uh, x and y uh, coordinates. Let's do that quickly. Let's go back to our command and say. 28 and 2 and let's sort by by the score let's go back here fix it say rms and let's do that again there we go so you can see we've got the score versus the rmsd all right. Now the plot, y you can't really see what's happening in the plot because as you can see, most of the scores are under zero, but there are some that are way up here and they, they distort the plot. It doesn't allow you to see it properly. So what we will do, we'll cut it off. We'll cut everything that is below this. So everything is un under, the, under zero and everything that is below 20 RMC. There isn't anything above 18. So we'll just, just leave it as it is. We'll see how it looks like. All right. So the command to do that is y range minus 80. Let's see, let's just say zero, let's see what it looks like. So set y range, and this will only plot everything that is below zero. And let's plot it again. Yeah, there we go. Okay, it's starting to take shape. Okay, uh, these top ones are still distorting the plot. Let's, uh, let's cut everything below 150 and 14 so let's say minus 150 and let's say x range what did you say did you say 15 let's say 15 there we go that's much better we can actually cut it even more let's say everything under 2010 210 much better this is a good plot actually what this means is that the lower the score the lower your RMSD we call this a funnel shaped plot and this is actually a very very good plot the lowest scoring structure that you have is very similar in fold to your design structure so this is considered a good fold Again, what this means is that the, the lowest score ab initio could find, which, which corresponds to the global minima, which means ab initio hasn't found a, a fold that gets any lower energy score than this. And if this is the global minima, the global minima of that design structure is very similar, because it has low RMSD, it's very similar to your design structure. You never get something that is zero. Zero means it's exactly the same, it's a carbon copy. But the closer you get to zero, the, the lowest RMSD value that you get, it means the more similar the folded structure is to your design structure. And that's exactly what we want. We want structures that have very low score, which means they are very stable, and very low RMSD, which means they are very similar to our design structure. Now, how can we see these structures? We can actually extract them. What we can do is we can extract the lowest 200 structures, all right, and we can cluster them. Clustering, basically, it's, it's a different protocol, um, but we usually run clustering after uh, ab initio so we can see how much similar these structures are to each other. What I mean is basically, 
uh, a cluster would, for example, make a circle here, and it will group all these structures that look similar. So instead of looking at individual, individual structures, individual 200 structures, uh, uh, clustering would cluster all the structures together. So if you have 10 structures that are similar, they will be clustered together. So you won't have to look at all 10 of them. Just looking at one gives you the indication that the other nine are similar. And that's what clustering does. So let's cluster these uh, structures. And, and when we cluster them, because they have very low RMSD, I can tell you from now, uh, they will look very similar to our design structure. So the first thing we have to do is, let's grab the score from the silent file. And again, I always say more because if I don't put, uh, uh, if I don't pipe it into more, it will print all 25,000 lines and sometimes it takes a while. And this is exactly what we want. All right, uh, now let's, let's sort by score. Right, so let's sort uh, by score. Excellent, so it has sorted by lowest score. You've got here the top is the lowest score and then goes down to the largest score. So let's cut at 200. So let's just get the lowest, uh, the, the top 200 lines, which means the uh, lowest 200 structures. There we go. So this is only uh, the lowest 200 scoring structures. And now let's extract the file name. Uh, again, so we want to extract these files. So we will extract the file name and the file name would be of Print, and if I'm not mistaken, it's number 31. Let's check. Yes, exactly. So these are the file names, and we will take these file names and include them in the um, into the binary that extracts PDB structures from the silent files. So it will only extract these file names because we know these file names are the 200 lowest scoring decoys, are the 200 lowest scoring structures. So let's save these into a file let's it's a temp file so just let's call it temp and if we find if we look at it here it's, it's just the names all right now i have a trick that i do i will need these structures to look like this to look like one single string and i don't have time to keep deleting every single line so i have a script that will do this so we'll come here and we will have this as temp yeah, and that's it. So now if you check it out, it will output it as list string. If you check it out, as you can see, all the names are in one single line. And that makes the next step much easier. Now we can extract these structure, these lowest 200 scoring structures using the, using, using an executable provided by Rosetta, which I've shown you before. So we will navigate to our Rosetta directory and this is the command, uh, the extract PDB executable and we will have the in file as the silent file, the, the full uh, silent file and we want to output PDB structures and here we will add the tags. Now remember we have 200 names and instead of putting every single file name in sequence we will just input the list, uh, the list string file. And basically, uh, we're inputting the content of this file in this position. But we can't do it this way. We need a command that will allow us to put the content of this file into this position. And the command is xargs. Now, when we execute this command, the xargs will input the content of this file into this position as if we have written all 200 names in sequence. Okay, it's done. It has extracted all 200 slowest scoring structures. Uh, we can check them out here. If we look, we will find all 200 structures. Let's open one of them and see what's inside. Let's open this one. Hmm, it's very similar to the structure the, that we expect. Excellent. Uh, now to cluster them, uh, I prefer not to cluster them all in this working directory. Let's make a 
let's make a directory called cluster and let's uh, let's move everything in there let's move let's move everything they're all named as right yeah into cluster yeah to make it easier if you have this uh, in a separate place and the command to cluster now remember when we cluster what it means is that Rosetta will be analyzing all these structures and then grouping them into groups all the groups that look like each other will be, will have a same name part of one structure and the others that look slightly different than the first group but they all look the same they will have a, sec a, a, a different name for the second group and so on and that basically means that instead of analyzing 200 structures we only have to analyze the uh, um, one structure from each group so the command is let's go to the uh, rosetta uh, directory and this is the command uh, it's the cluster binary and we will we will ask for we will ask to and we will ask to link to the database so home search and then Rosetta uh, to link to the database and um, the radius so the size of the cluster three is good and then the silent file output yes yeah uh, and uh, and, so ag and again I always recommend that we output a silent file it's just easier to, uh, to handle uh, afterwards and then the input file is all PDBs all the PDB all the PDBs in this directory oh wait nope we're in the wrong directory we have to cd into the cluster directory and now we can run it here yeah. all right it's done um, which groups they are part of so we remove all the pdb files uh, we don't need them anymore and as you can see we only have the uh, cluster uh, silent file and now we again re-extract these same files but now they will be extracted with different names according to their to the group they are part of so let's go to the rosetta directory and this is the command uh, and it's exactly the same command that we extract pdb structures from the fold silent file uh, we extract them from the cluster silent file uh, but pay attention here because we are extracting every single file we don't need to put any tags we just leave it empty and leaving it empty means all of them and we have only 200 structures so it's not going to take a long time but uh, I explained to you before if you leave this empty it will extract every single structure file within a silent file and if you do that in the fold silent file it will extract 25,000 structures and it might crash your computer but here it's fine because there are only 200 structures okay these are all the structures and as you can see they are renamed they have different names now let's check them out let's see, um, they're called cluster and then the number of the cluster and then the member of the cluster so again usually in computation uh, we start with zero so uh, cluster zero structure number zero so it's the first structure of the first cluster all right um, now I'm not surprised that they're all part of the same structure <laughs> that's this is usually not the case usually would get structure maybe after uh, uh, 10 structures you get maybe uh, st uh, cluster number one uh, so this is the first cluster and then the second cluster and then the third cluster and so on uh, and basically it's ordered from the largest structure to the smallest cluster now remember when we looked at the plot it was a very good funnel plot so it's not surprising that the lowest 200 structures all look the same uh, let's see how they look like let's um, let's bring in these two here this one and the original designed structure in fact actually let's, let's open all of them together let me rename this as one so just it's at the top of the list and let's open uh, opening all of them would be a bit computation intensive let's open the first 10 and you can see they're not they, they don't all look the same they don't look like they look the same because remember 
I've initially folded them stochastically. Uh, the three-dimensional space of each atom is different, even though they all fold the same. So let's align them all uh, towards the original structure, the, stru uh, the design structure. So align all to this, and let's center. This is amazing. Look, you can even you can already tell that it's uh, it's folding on it very nicely. Cartoon. There we go. Amazing. And uh, I'm actually really surprised with this result. It's actually very very good. Um, yeah. Let's color them. Let's make this one uh, red and the. Yeah, it's amazing. This is a really, really good fold. So these are the two results that you need. You need the um, cluster so you can visualize what the, your lowest scoring structures look like, uh, how much similar they are to your design structure and the plot. So remember, this was our plot. Let's save. Let's save it so we can uh, look at it uh, again. Uh, Plot.pdf. Let's save. So remember, this was our plot. You can see it has a very nice funnel shape. Uh, it all comes down to a, more or less a single point and it's not surprising that because all these structures here are very similar uh, it's not surprising that when we cluster them all of them fall within the same cluster uh, and these are basically the two results that you get out of um, an issue you get you get the plot and of course if you get a funnel plot it's excellent and you look at the cluster how how good is the clustering? Because sometimes you might get a funnel shaped plot, but the clustering is really bad. Something in this structure doesn't look right, and you, it needs a human eye for you to check it out and critique it. Uh, so this was a very good ab initio result. Let's look at the bad one. So on the right here, you can see kind of a bad ab initio result. Uh, and on the left here, you can see our very good ab initio result. Um, this here shows you that it's not a funnel shaped plot. This is a funnel shaped plot. You can see the funnel here It's a it has a clear point where the lowest structures converge here. They don't they're all over the place You can th see the lowest structures uh, are at uh, low RMSD or medium RMSD or high RMSD And it, it's very difficult to tell which ones truly will the amino acid sequence fall to so this is considered a bad ab initio result. So this is just to show you the difference between what a good result looks like and a bad result looks like. Now, if you try to cluster these structures, you will get them all over the place. You get uh, a cluster here, a cluster here, a cluster here, a cluster here, maybe some clusters here. And when you look at them, they will look totally different. The difference between uh, this structure that has uh, an RMSD that is very close to our design structure compared to this one that is 10 angstroms is, is a lot. Um, they, they will look totally different. So to end my video, uh, I hope you found it very useful. I do have a script written that automates the entire ab initio process. Uh, let me show you. I have it on my GitHub, and it's under the um, it's under the Rosetta ab initio directory. And um, it's very simple. Actually, let me let me download it so I can show it to you in colors. All right, so the so the script is very straightforward. Basically, it does everything that we have done uh, automatically. So you won't have to uh, copy, paste, uh, combine, extract the numbers, search and look for them. It just does it automatically. It starts by writing the submission file. All you have to do is provide the five files that we talked about. The a structure file, the FASTA file, the Threemer, Nightmare fragment files, and the Cypred secondary structure prediction files. And then you just execute this script. And basically what it does is, first it will write the uh, ab initio submission file, and then it will write the clustering submission file, uh, and then submits them both at the same time. 
So you end up with um, a thousand array structure that will run the ab initio, and then once it finishes, it will automatically run the clustering script. And the clustering script includes a relax command, so it uh, it relaxes the structure, so it shows you where the relaxed uh, structure um, is is located, so you can tell how good uh, your folding is. And then it combines all the thousand silent files into one silent file and then extracts the RMSD and the score and then clusters as you've seen it, uh, it makes a directory it uh, it extracts the lowest 200 structures cluster them and finally it plots the score versus RMSD plot and saves it as a PDF so basically the in this entire video can be performed with one click and I, I invite you to check the script out from my github um, remember that my supercomputer uses PBS as its job scheduler. So if you use PBS, this will be very easy for you to implement. But if it uses Slurm or another job scheduler, you will have to change it and tweak it. So I can, I, I can say that most of the work is already done for you. You just have to change some of these commands to suit your own uh, supercomputer's job scheduler. But again, this script is bash. It's very simple. It's, it's basically Every single line is a different command, on mostly all the commands that we've used. The only difference is uh, I don't include a flags file. Uh, that's one function in Rosetta that instead of having a flags file, you can actually um, you can actually put all the flags in one line. And since this is a script, I'm not going to write this. I can just include that, and it cleans up my uh, my working directory. It won't have these flags files all over the place. And I hope you found this video useful. I know when you start using Rosetta, sometimes the uh, the, uh, the, le the learning curve is a bit steep, especially that it's uh, it's a large uh, software, uh, it's, it's complicated, there's a lot of things that uh, can go wrong, and sometimes when things go wrong, you don't know that you've done something wrong, it's, uh, it's a little bit kind of invisible. Um, so I hope this video shows you how to perform an ab initio fold, and again, ab initio is one of these central tools in protein design. And if you understand how to perform ab initio fold, you probably will understand how at least Rosetta functions. And uh, even if you are not using Rosetta to design proteins, you can still use ab initio to fold uh, proteins that you've designed somewhere else. Thank you for watching.